the control center for your life is your attitude again i repeat the control center for your life is your attitude now you may be wondering why am i giving you this quote or what is the need for me to read this out but i was just thinking we are learning the chapter called controlling and we have completed the importance the demerits the meaning the definition and we moving on to the fourth or the fifth topic which today we will be learning is called controlling process now all of us in the organization you i have already taught you in the, in the introductory telling that if you want to measure the performance of an employee you need to measure it with the standard performance that's set by the organization so when in the organization itself has a controlling process then your life also has to have a controlling process so where they say that your attitude reflects the what you want to do so it's just a small tip you don't have to relate it to your organization so probably you can take it as a takeaway for today's session that is the control center for your life is your attitude so yeah the way you uh, the way you have you had the way you handle yourself is the what you are going to portray and show to people okay how you're going to control things all around you that's how you're going to portray things so let's move on into our topic without wasting much time so what you're going to be learning is the controlling process now this topic is going to come for an 8 marker or it would be asked for a 4 marker so again i'm writing it here 8 marks or slash 4 marks so that it is easy for you to understand now i've told you certain important terminologies for you to remember in my previous session where i've taught you about standards okay and then i've taught you about actual performance then i've taught you about comparison that is with actual performance and standards then i taught you about corrective actions so these are the four terminologies in the last class i spoke now the same four terminologies i'm going to teach you today but in a little more depth scenario so that this eight mark or four mark is going to be very very easy for you okay so let's move on now what is the meaning of setting performance standards now all of you know by now standards are set by whom yes you're right standards are set by the organization and i always tell my students about this when i say standard performance you need to know that it is set by the organization when i say actual performance you need to know it's the employee's performance so in the organization what they are saying when you are going to set standard performance in the organization you should ensure that it is an achievable standard which you are talking about or which you are uh, let's say you want to ask the employees to achieve it and these standard performance is going to be measured with the actual performance of the employees and it is a benchmark benchmark means what it is setting a like let's say a stage not really a stage but it is setting a height or a standard in which the or uh, every employee will try to achieve it and try to ensure that he is able to do his job so these standards should be set both in quantitative terms as well as quantitative uh, qualitative terms quantitative is based on your numbers like example is your 100 emails qualitative terms is in those 100 emails how many emails are perfectly very neatly uh, typed without any errors full information is given no grammatical errors so what is it quantitative wise and qualitative wise it should be complete okay whatever standard you're setting and if these standards are too high for the employees to achieve you should be able to modify this from time to time and it should be realistic standards that you are setting it should not be unrealistic unrealistic standards like example if i'm going to tell you you need to achieve 200 emails it's something that's very unrealistic for the employee to achieve because 200 emails it is very difficult in for you to complete in a day because even 100 emails it's little difficult but you can still achieve that particular target so the words i have underlined in purple which is uh, bolded that's the words you need to actually learn 
So the first step is setting standards performance. Now the performance standards what we have set is 100 emails a day and this is going to be measured quantitative wise as well as qualitative. There is a team called as the uh, quality analyst team which is going to monitor all the emails that are going to be sending. Second is measurement of actual performance. Now again we will say actual performance refers to whom? Yes, you're right again. Employees performance. So please understand these terminologies. It'll be easy for you to learn. OK, so actual performance refers to employees performance. OK, now these performance, the employees now, let's say I'm your manager and I'm telling you you're my employee. I'm telling you now these are the standards set. These are the um, this is the quantitative standard telling you need to complete 100 emails and there should not be any errors grammatically and even while you're giving any details on the emails your email should be perfect even quality wise so what am i telling you i'm setting the standard very uh, let's say i'm letting you know about the standard that's been set now what is the meaning of actual performance you will start achieving your performance and i will measure your performance whether your performance is going high or whether it's going low now what are the ways i will check your performance it's either through personal observation every day I'm coming and I'm really checking like how many emails are you doing? Are you able to achieve your targets? Are you able, are you facing any difficulties? I'm sampling your emails like let's say randomly I'm picking one five six emails and I'm checking whether all the information are uh, excellent. Every week I do a performance report. That means what I pull your data, extract your data in an Excel form and then I check what is your performance every day. Like do you remember the example I said Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, Thursday, Friday. So every day how many emails are you able to complete so that is the meaning of uh, the way you're going to check your actual performance of the employees and as far as possible it should be measured in the same units in which standards are set that means if you are setting the standards in the form of let's say um, let's say tables or reports you should ensure that performance also you're measuring it in the same tables and reports so that the uh, it is very accurate or the details are very correct so the first one one is your setting standards second one is measure actual performance which refers to employees performance the third one is you're comparing your actual performance with your standards that you are set do you remember again your Monday Tuesday Wednesday Thursday Friday so what are you literally doing here you're comparing your emails uh, from see for this particular topic you can again go to the introductory uh, topic of controlling and that five minutes video which I have included for you where I'm teaching on the board you can please listen to it so that it would help you for this particular topic again OK, because I'm giving you realistic examples there so that it's easy for you to understand. So what does it mean of comparing actual performance? I'm comparing the performance what you have produced every single day with this hundred emails, the standards which I have set for the entire organization. So what is happening when I minus, let's say when I'm minusing hundred minus, uh, let, let's say we have Monday, we have Tuesday, we have Wednesday, we have Thursday and Friday. OK, now Monday, my standard performance is, let's say, 50. Then it goes to 70, then it goes to 80, then it goes to 90 and then it goes to 100. Now, what is this? This is the uh, actual performance of the employees in a week. But what is my standards? My standard is always 100 emails a day, all the days. So now what am I doing? Monday, I'm checking the performance. Let's say 50 minus 100, 70 minus 100, 80 minus 100, 90 minus 100, and 100 minus 100 is 0. So what is it? The difference that is coming is what is called as deviation. OK, so the difference between the actual performance and the standard performance is the deviation. OK, now what is it? It's nothing but is. Yeah, it's a difference. So what are they telling these deviations or these changes should be measured in quantitative terms? Why? Because it's a proof which you can tell the employee. See, on Monday you have not done 50 emails. Tuesday you have not done 30 emails. What is the reason? So if you are going to measure it in qualitative terms, it becomes difficult for the employee to understand, difficult for you to track also. So in the organization, actual performance, the, the comparison is done week on week. That means every week the standard performance is checked with the actual performance and then the deviation is taken and then you give a
to the employee feedback means you give a small feedback telling come on you need to pull up your socks you need to do really well in the organization the fourth one is analyzing deviations now what is the meaning of analyzing deviation i told you deviation refers to the word call changes okay deviation refers to the word call changes now whatever changes are happening that is between the actual performance and the standard performance those changes how you are going to improvise on those changes okay now these deviations are expected results in all the activities and it's analyzed for their causes deviations may have multiple causes for their origin so what is happening now as a manager like i've already explained earlier as a manager you go and ask as a, or, or let's say as a team leader you go and ask the employees what's the problem i don't see you uh, you're not able to do your 100 emails every single day so what is the problems the employees are facing the employees are saying you know what today there were three people absent in the team because of high absenteeism i was not able to do my job i had to take a lot of calls and i had to concentrate on someone where else's work also another person would say it's too hectic for us to do because every email is different okay the information asked in one email is not the same in the other email so it's getting is very time consuming for us to do so what is happening as a manager you need to check the causes for which there are deviations that is taking place okay and if you fail to find out why these deviations are taking place then the organization would not be able to cope up with the uh, actual performance being 100% okay so you need to ensure that these deviations have certain causes and these causes are being reported where are they being reported they need to be reported the manager and the team leader need to report these problems to the appropriate levels that is to the higher level manager so the last one is you're taking corrective actions how are you taking corrective actions here now you know what is the problem the team is not able to achieve their targets so what you do is you will ensure that wherever the absenteeism rate is high you will call the employees you will tell them please ensure that you're not taking an inappropriate or inappropriate uh, leaves because the entire team is affected by you and probably you would tell the uh, others if you're having complicated emails why don't you see to sort out all the easy emails first keep the complicated emails to the last so that you can sit solid one or two hours and complete all your emails so what are you doing you're ensuring that you are taking corrective actions and you're taking measures to ensure that your ap is equal to your sp so what are they saying deviations go beyond the acceptable range that means the if always you should ensure that ap is equal to i have already again taught you but still i'm mentioning ap should be equal to sp okay if ap is equal to sp that means the or the uh, let's say the productivity of the employees is 100% now if ap is greater than sp okay if ap is greater than sp that means the performance is greater okay that the organization and the employees are doing excellently well but if ap is less than okay this gray uh, let's say less than symbol then sp that means the organization or the employees are doing really bad so the results will show red now if ap is less than sp the result will show if ap is equal to sp in orange or in let's say green if ap is greater than sp it would show a very good color let's say let's say yellow where it shows excellent okay so what used to happen i was uh, i will i'll tell you our own my own example when i was working in the mncc you would always think that why does this teacher gives a lot of references to her mnc organizations because we always think we are learning something that we may not be working on in an, in the organization probably we are second pc students or your degree students you may think ah it's just a subject which you would not be practically be learning in you'll not be applying it in the organization but let me tell you one thing 
even I thought th the same thing and I didn't even remember I would I learned a subject called as principles of management or business or all these subjects I really didn't uh, didn't even think I had learned when I started working in the organization. But what, after a few years, when I started working in the organization, I started understanding things. Then when I started teaching, that is when I understood all that is there in our books is what has been done in the organization. So that is the reason in all my lectures or in all my sessions, I ensure that to teach my students and tell them it's not that you're learning theoretical uh, concepts you are actually it is in reality it is there practically with that's been used in the organization so please ensure that in the organization like yeah coming back to the example when i was working in the organization we were a team of let's say 25 members we had a team leader manager we had a subject matter expert and we were uh yeah team members that time i was fresh out of college so i joined uh, the organization and we had a white board, just like how you have in your schools and colleges, a big white board. This white board would be there in our um, place where we sit. And there'll be a lot of numbers that's been uploaded on it. And every week, my manager would ask my subject matter expert or my team leader to pull an entire tracker. Tracker means to check one entire big Excel sheet would be there, which has a lot of numbers and names. And they'll be pulling a lot of reports and they will up, they'll take a printout of it and then they'll put it up on that white uh, on that whiteboard with a lot of other numbers and details written and they will uh, there'll be three colors one will be red one will be amber that's orange and one will be green i always used to wonder what is this then i when i gained some knowledge when i gained some experience in the organization i understood that whenever the team is not doing good uh, whenever we are not able to achieve our performance, achieve our targets that has been set, our 100 emails or whatever calls or whatever it is, then they would check all our data and the deviation, okay, our standard deviation, they'll use certain formulas, everything. They'll come to a conclusion telling that the employee, uh, the performance for this particular week is red. So whenever you have this top level managers, they will come on a flow visit. Flow visit means they will come and they will visit every team. They will not literally speak to every single employee. They'll just look, have a look at the whiteboard. The whiteboard will give them all the details and will give, speak to them. What is the performance of the team? So when they see red, they will contact the manager and they'll ask the manager, why is the performance of the team in red? What has happened? So that time the, um, the manager, before the uh, person comes and asks the question, where he will mark the, let's say the performance as red and below itself, he will type a note stating that this week, so many people were absent. This week, so many people left the organization. The call flow was very high and all these reasons would be added. So when the top level management comes on a flow visit, they will look at the reasons and they will have a one on one session with the manager and find out how they can improvise on helping the team so that the uh, performance can be changed into green. So that is the corrective actions which the management or the organization will take to ensure that the workers are able to do a good job and the actual performance is equal to standard performance. And they will also ensure that unnecessary the employees are not working over time. Understood. So I hope you understood this particular topic. So I so I hope you really understood this topic. And uh, if you have any doubts, please don't stop. Please ask me a lot of questions. I would really be able to help you with it. And leave a leave a comment in the comment box if you really understood this starting of the new chapter. Since we are halfway through the chapter, in the next session, I would be telling, teaching you relationship between planning and controlling. And then we would move on to um, the techniques of controlling, which has traditional techniques and the modern techniques. So it's very important for you to give me feedback, telling that the session we were able to understand, we were not able to understand, this point was easy, these points. So only then I will be able to understand. So please subscribe because going forth, a lot of videos are going to come up and it would be easy for you to learn and take notes also. And please um, help the others also to learn. So any doubts, please let me know. Thank you.